Right, well, welcome to another Howard's Orchid video here in Cambridge, England, where it's a beautiful, calm, warm spring day. And for the first time in absolutely months, probably five or six months, the temperature in here is now above 20 centigrade. So that kind of tells you that things haven't really been very good for a lot of my orchids for quite a long time. And a lot of them, those species uh, that would really like it warmer and brighter, they just sort of bide their time over winter. Um, maybe they're actually sulking, I'm not really sure. Anyway, there are two orchids that I really wanted to show you today. And I had intended to do this filming quite a few weeks ago, but luckily because they have such long lasting flowers, there's still plenty of time. Now, the first one is this one. This is Epidendrum stamfordianum, which is a beautiful uh, species that comes from um, sort of Central uh, America, Mexico, right down into South America. It's a sort of Cattleya type um, orchid with these beautiful arching flowers. When they were growing, I did actually sort of tie them up so that they were more vertical, but in their native habitat, where I believe they're pollinated by large butterflies, the flower spikes as they develop would sort of come out and sort of present themselves beautifully so that the butterflies can alight on them and pollinate them. Now this particular epidendrum is interesting in that the, and I'll just show you that the flower spikes actually develop just on their own from the front of one of the most recent pseudo um, bulbs, the sort of stems. And at first they're just these very sort of fine little shoots that come up and they look very much like growth. Um, and then they you can gradually tell that they're developing into a flower spike. This orchid I've had for a long time, at least five years. Um, and it has grown quite slowly and that's I think because really they come from altitudes 20 to about 800 meters. So they're classified in the orchid growing world as intermediate to warm, but really I think they want to be warm. And in here, I certainly couldn't call it warm. So it did grow fairly slowly for me. Last year was the first time it flowered, and this is the second time. Last year I had one flowering spike, and this year two, because the Ah yes, that's because the main sort of growing stem has divided, so I now have two sort of leading growths coming out. Now these flowers, I originally bought it because they're supposed to be scented. It has a sort of, it smells, it's sort of pleasant, not really strong, but okay. I mean, it's worth having for the scent, you know, you could present it to somebody and say, sniff this. What do you think? And I think they would say, oh, it's nice. Um, and one of the things I should say is that being a sort of cattleya type orchid, it needs to dry out quite well between waterings, so you don't want to keep it too moist. I'll just take it out of the pot so I can show you. And this is the advantage of growing them in um, clear pots. You can see the roots. They've got sort of quite thick roots. This is growing in sort of medium bark just bark. You can see there. It's got quite a good root system. Um, and I'm absolutely thrilled with it. Um, and since the flowers last, they've been out now for over six weeks. Probably it's going to be getting on for at least two months. You can just about see there's one flower there that's finished and a couple that I picked off before I started filming. But it's a wonderful orchid. I'm really pleased with it. And I've got another epidendrum, which is also in flower. Also, just turn that around. Also with incredibly long lasting flowers. This is epidendrum ciliari. And they have really beautiful delicately shaped flowers. Now this doesn't smell now but 
is obviously a moth pollinated orchid because it smells beautifully in the evening and typically of many of those uh, very pale, often white or cream coloured flowers for, uh, because they're night scented, they also have a beautiful sort of quite heavy, rich, delightful scent and perfume. And like the Epidendrum Parkinsonianum, um, this comes from a very sort of similar distribution, but a little bit higher altitude range, so it's a bit more tolerance of temperature. This comes from 100 to 1,000 metres. Um, so I think this is okay in here, but I mean this has one flower spike, which is great, but it should have more and the reason for that is that the light levels in here and because these two epidendrums really want sort of cattleya type light levels so quite a lot of light not really bright but quite a lot of light it does not really get as much light as it needs to flower as freely as it should in this greenhouse in cambridge botanic gardens it was quite notable they also have one a similar in size and that had two or three flower spikes um, because they can they've got different sort of climate zones so they can put it uh, where they think it will do best but this is another really beautiful um, orchid um, likewise this is also growing in um, a clear plastic pot with sort of medium bark just medium bark and in both cases I'm very careful not to overwater them so they, like catliers need, they need to dry out pretty thoroughly between waterings. Now I've got um, another little job to do and I'm going to take you down to our workshop for that uh, but I'll show you first. Now this is my Sologeny Cristata Alba which has beautiful pristine white flowers without any sort of yellow markings on them. Really lovely. And this is my Sologeny Cristata, the more normal one, with very beautifully scented flowers. Now, because it's grown in here, the distance between the internodes is relatively large. So what I do after it's finished flowering, you can just see an old flowering stalk there, but I've cut most of them off. I actually go round and, I don't know if you can see there, you can see there's a sort of plastic covered wire staple and I've used that to sort of force the stems sort of within a more sort of confined radius, otherwise it would be growing outwards in all directions. In my experience this one, Cristata alba, is even more sort of straggly and has an even more tendency to grow in a quite an unruly way. And so I'm going to take it down to the workshop and just show you what I do to keep these otherwise very sort of expansive orchids into a sort of much tidier shape. Well, first of all, I'll trim off the flowering shoots that have finished. Um, for me, they flower quite well every year um, because, as I've said in previous videos, the Conditions in the greenhouse here are very well suited to Sologeny, sort of cool to intermediate, not too high light levels. So what I do is I use some of this plastic coated wire because in the past I found that where um, galvanised wire touches roots, the orchids really don't like it. So I always use plast plastic coated wire. So just cut off a short length like that and bend it into a straighten it first and bend it into what looks a bit like a sort of large sort of staple and then without sort of forcing anything too much just sort of tease this shoot round so that you can see if I show you you can see the new growth just coming there and I don't want that shooting off outside the pot so if I pull it round to here and put a staple here. Now it's tucked within the pot 
and that it will hopefully sort of grow round. That one can go there, and this one likewise. By doing this, it keeps it into a much more compact shape. So this can now rejoin the other one on this uh, window ledge here, where it's away from the heat and keeps as cool as possible. Now another orchid that is um, new to me is this Phalaenopsis javanica, which I had seen photographs of it and it's one of those orchids that in my experience look much more beautiful in real life than they do in a photograph. Well that's classified as warm growing. I just about get away with it in here. And this was mounted on a piece of cork with some stretchy elastic, just a little bit of sphagnum moss um, to start it off. And this is the first time it's flowered. And I think the flowers are really beautiful. They last a long time. There is a very faint cinnamon scent to it. And I think it's absolutely exquisite. So of the species orchids that are really quite sort of small growing, I'm really pleased with this. Now, one just before I go, one bit of good news. Now, just very quickly, this is, and I've done um, a video on this in the past. This is my Vanda Denisoniana orange, which took me a long time to actually get it to flower because it tended to produce flower spikes in the sort of just before Christmas in the winter when it was the most horrible time of the year, and they always bolted. Anyway. It's taken to flowering for me quite regularly. And this time, this fl it flowered last summer. Um, and you can see that, in fact, you probably can't see, there are the remains of the base of the flower spikes um, from previous couple of years. And it has taken to flowering quite regularly for me in the summer and um, now in late spring. This flower spike developed much more sensibly after the worst of the winter when the weather was beginning to sort of perk up a bit and so I have this um, to look forward to for maybe twice a year now so I'm really pleased. So it's worth persevering with some orchids, uh, reading up about them and getting to know what they like and don't like and just basically staying with it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't but in this case um, after many years of patience this has rewarded me, so I'm really pleased. Anyway, um, thanks ever so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Uh, thanks ever so much to everybody who subscribes to this channel and for the comments that you make, mostly complimentary, which is very kind of everyone. I try to answer questions um, if people ask them uh, to the best of my ability. And I hope to see you in the next video.